Hi, welcome to the next edition of Smart Physics. Here we have some questions on circular motion and gravitation. And now since the questions are attached, I am sure it makes more sense as you can see the questions and the answers together. So here we go on number one. Europa, a moon of Jupiter. Its diameter is given and its period is given. Got to know that period means the time taken to go around it one time. So it's given in days. All units of time in physics have to be converted into seconds. So you have to convert it into seconds. And then you're asked to find the mass. You know that it's the gravitational force that provides the centripetal force. And uh, when putting those two together, we get this formula for time period. The square of the time period is 4 pi squared by g times the mass in the denominator and times r cube in the numerator. So when you rearrange this, mass goes to the top there and t squared comes down and now substitute that's pi square root the radius is half of the diameter now remember that you if you see the diameter you always take half of that and so time now is converted into seconds, 3.55 days. Each day has 24 hours in it, and each hour has 3,600 seconds in it. So that's why it's been multiplied with 24 to change days into hours, and then again by 3,600 to change hours into seconds. And this is the universal gravitational constant. On plugging it in cal and calculating carefully, you get 1.89 times 10 to the power 27 kilogram. On to the second one. Here you have a wheel rotating at 5 revolutions per second. And there is a point located point 2 meter from the axis. What is the centripetal acceleration? There are two formulas for centripetal acceleration. You can either put it as AC is equal to V squared by R or R times omega squared. Radius times omega squared. Omega is the angular speed and it's given by 2 pi times the frequency. Frequency is the number of revolutions in one second. Again, Omega is 2 pi times frequency. What is frequency? It is the number of revolutions in one second. In this question, number of revolutions per second is given as 5. So 2 pi times 5, that's 10 pi radians per second. Now take that, substitute into this equation. Calculate that quantity you get 198 meter per second squared. That is the centripetal acceleration. Takes us to the third one, which says, what is the gravitational force on a 70 kilogram person? So that's object one, standing on the earth due to the moon. So the moon is object two. So we're gonna calculate the gravitational force between the person and the moon. This question has nothing to do with the Earth. And uh, you know that the formula for gravitation is G times the product of the masses. Here it is the mass of the moon and the man divided by the distance squared. So put those numbers that are given. Mass of the moon. 
times the mass of the man, both in kilograms, and divided by the distance, which is in meter. So you have a square for the distance, don't forget that, and you calculate that to be point not not two four newtons. Okay. Takes us to the fourth. It says how many revolutions per minute must a circular rotating space station of radius 1000 meter rotate to produce an artificial gravity of 9.80 meter per second squared. You know the gravity is created because of the rotational motion and the force or the acceleration in rotational motion is called the centripetal acceleration. We know the formula for centripetal acceleration. We've used it one time before. It's R omega squared. This time the centripetal acceleration is given as 9.80 because that is the acceleration to be produced. So all you got to do is multiply 1000 times omega squared. So rearrange and omega squared is 9.80 by 1000. So omega is 9.80 by 1000. Square root of that quantity gives 0.099 radian per second. But now that is angle described in one second. We got to find revolutions per minute. But first of all, we can find the revolutions per second using the formula omega is 2 pi times frequency. Remember, frequency is number of revolutions in one second. So first find that, rearrange. So 0 0.099 radians per second divided by 2 pi that gives 0 0.0157 rotations per second. Now if that's the number of rotations in one second, how do you find the rotations or revolutions in one minute? Multiply by 60. Yes. So that quantity multiplied by 60 gives rotations per minute. That is 0 0.95 rotations per minute. Brings us to the fifth one. The maximum speed around a level curve is 30 km per hour. What is the maximum speed around a curve with twice the radius? Assume all of the factors remain unchanged. So now we need to have a relation between speed and radius. And of course we do. We know it's a level road. So when it goes around the curve, it's only friction that is keeping the automobile on the road. It's only friction. And so we know that the centripetal force mv squared by r is equal to friction. Now what's friction? Friction is mu times mg. Okay, where mu is the coefficient of friction. In this case is mu s. Uh, coefficient of static friction. Let me include that. So it's mu s mg. Centripetal force is a force of friction. Cancel the masses. Rearrange. Find the velocity. You get the velocity squared is mu rg. So now you have two cases. Case 1, let the velocity be v1. Case 2, let it be v2. And so when you make those two equations and divide one by the other, Cancel mu, cancel the acceleration due to gravity. And remember that R2 is given as 2 times R1. Okay, in the problem. Therefore, substitute that. So, leave R1 as itself and then R2 is 2 times R1. So, the R1s get cancelled and V2 squared is V1 squared times 2. So V2 should be square root of that. Square root of V1 squared is V1. And then you take the square root of 2. So that is 30 multiplied by square root 2. 42.4 kilometer per hour. So you didn't even have to change kilometer per hour into meter per second. 
because this is a ratio question and the answers as you can see are given in kilometer per hour takes us to the sixth question and in this question what is the minimum banking angle to negotiate a hundred meter radius turn at 35 meter per second without skidding banking the formula for the angle of banking is tan theta is equal to b squared by rg theta is the angle of banking v is the velocity r is the radius and g is acceleration due to gravity straightforward question 35 squared by 100 meter radius times 9.80 that happens to be 1.25 once you get tan theta to find theta you take the inverse of that so theta is tan inverse of 1.25 you gotta hit shift on the calculator enter 1.25 and then press the tan key to get 51 degrees okay the seventh question talks about an object moving at a constant speed of 40 meter per second and the radius is given what's the acceleration remember there's another formula for centripetal acceleration it's v squared by r straightforward direct substitution 40 squared by 200 gives 8 meter per second squared how tough can that be all right number eight here we have the hydrogen atom. If there's a proton, the mass given, electron, the mass given, and the radius of orbit is given. What is the mutual attractive force? It's a gravitational force that uh, is being asked to be calculated here, not the electric force. So the gravitational force is just given by the formula. F is G, M1, M2 by R squared. And uh, R is 6.673 times 10 to the negative 11. Masses are given. Mass of the proton multiplied by the mass of the electron divided by the distance square between them. Calculate that. You get 3.6 times 10 to the negative 4.7. Oh, I mean, that's 10 to the negative 47 newtons. Small force. Obviously, in the atomic world, distances and forces all become small. All right, this one talks about the maximum force a pilot can withstand or stand is about seven times his weight. What's the minimum radius? that a jet plane's pilot pulling out of a vertical dive can tolerate. You know, the biggest problem in this question is, see, even if he's not taking that curve, already his weight is acting on him. Is that clear enough? His weight, mg, is already acting on him. And therefore, if the total he can withstand is seven times, that means the additional force created due to the circular motion can only be six times mg. That is the point. Cannot be seven times mg because the total is seven times mg. So the circular motion only produces six mg as you can see. So that now you have to say centripetal force is six mg. Is equal to mv squared by r. Masses cancel out. Make radius the subject. And you calculate it. 250 squared by 6 times 9.80. And this is the best question of the lot. Because you got to think. And if you take uh, 7 mg, you get another answer straight ahead. You might think that is correct. So, be careful here. The, here lies the trick. That is, brings us to the last question, which is a straightforward one. A car is going around a flat curve, no banking. 
radius given, 50 meters, speed given. And uh, the centripetal force provided by friction is given. Now we know, we've done a problem like this before, we know that the centripetal force, which is mv squared by r, is equal to friction. Actually, we did not need this, just put it straight ahead, equal to friction. And uh, substitute the velocities, the radius. Friction is given as 1.2 times 10 to the 4, rearrange that make mass the subject and uh, calculate 20 squared is what gives us the 400 there it gets 1500 kilogram all right now what what you can do is you see please if these videos are helping you out you know tell your friends about this because i want this subject to get popular i want them to understand out there that physics is a tremendously interesting subject. Tell your friends. Post it on Facebook or YouTube or t just tell them. This is f free tutoring. Now that the questions are attached, everybody can make use of it. Go ahead. Don't be selfish. Just tell others. Number two, tell me, is this helping you? How can I make it better? Is this, I mean, is the speed too fast? Is it interesting what else can i do from a student's point of view try to post comments it has to be honest criticism uh, if you if you don't like it don't put your name but i just want to get to your comments thank you so much and hope it helps you